This is a month where everything freaking changes. Everything changes. <laughs> Hello, my lovely badasses, and welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for your rising sign. Okay, boo. July is insane. We have some really big things happening, okay? July is the month, okay? The month where basically we are halfway through the year, number one, but also this second half of the year is going to be so different than the first half of the year, okay? So you really want to catch your rising signs horoscope for this month. Send this to your friends, send this to your family, send it everywhere, okay? Because this is also a celebration, okay? It has been a long time since I have been this consistent with my horoscopes every month. Like usually around this time of year as a Leo rising, July cancer season, it's my 12th house. So <laughs> I usually kind of dip out for a little bit, you know, something comes up, I'm just not feeling it. And it's just like, I gotta like, just get some space, you know? And uh, yeah, but I am still here and we are still kicking and it is freaking awesome. I went through to my first music festival two weeks ago to Bonnaroo and it was absolutely insane i am a changed changed woman over here okay make sure to watch all the way to the end to really catch what's going on because a lot of the big things that are happening this month are happening towards the end of the month so you're going to want to stay through your whole horoscope and i will be checking to make sure that you did and uh yeah with that being said let's get into july 2023 for your rising sign let go Kensa darling, Kensa rising. So welcome to your horoscope for July 2023. This is such a big and exciting month for you as it is literally cancer season. So this is a time, a time of rebirth, a time of a new you being born and a time where you're really going to start wanting to express yourself, express your opinions more, say what you mean, say what you feel, speak from your heart. That's going to be a huge theme, especially for the first like week or so of July. And then you're going to go into a time of really focusing on your priorities, your wants, your needs, your money, your income, your finances, and really kind of organizing your life, organizing your environment, organizing the things around you and getting things together, getting things working, getting things moving. And then towards the end of the month, everything's going to change because we have a massive karmic and faded destined kind of transit happening with the nodes moving into Aries and Libra, which is a huge, huge deal for you as a cardinal sign. This is your 10th and fourth house. And I just went through this. So I'm going to be able to give you all the tea, all the tea on the nodes moving through your 10th and fourth house. So buckle up. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on. Kick back, relax, grab you a drink or a crystal, and let's get into what is coming for you in July Cancer. So we start off the month on the second with Mercury, the, the planet of communication and speech and messages moving into your sign, which means you're gonna be saying a lot more. You're gonna be speaking up a lot more. You're gonna be speaking your opinion a lot more. You're gonna be talking a lot more. You're gonna find yourself conversating a lot more and speaking up. And you may find yourself feeling a lot more busy as well with Mercury moving into your first. You may be having a lot of thoughts going on about who you are, your identity, what you want, what your heart wants, your body, your appearance, appearance and things like that. So that's going to be really big, but it's only going to be there for like the first 10 days of the month. Like Mercury is flying through your sign. So it's going to be a very quick transit, but it still nonetheless is going to be a transit where if you need to speak up about something, if you need to announce something or give some news or send a message or whatever, if you need to get some shit done, this is going to really help you. You may feel it may be a little bit more hard to focus or you may be focused on how you're feeling a lot more, your moods, your focus may depend on your moods. So you may find that coming up a lot in the first like 10 days of the month. So then from the first until about the 10th as well, we're also gonna have Venus joining the sign of Mars in your second house. And so again, those first 10 days of the month are gonna be having Mars and Venus conjunct. And this is a big deal because this is your second house. And so this is gonna be a time where it's like your desires are aligning in terms of what you wanna do financially, your financial goals, what you desire in terms of your finances. Not only are you going to like have this great feeling about it, but you're also gonna have the energy and the motivation and the willpower to back that up. Venus and Mars aligning in the sky is a beautiful, beautiful transit where we really start bringing things together. Things start making sense. Things start merging, especially to do with what we love, what we desire, what we want versus 
how we take action and how we go across, how we go about what we want, how we, you know, gain motivation. So you're going to be feeling very inspired and very in this like really great, big, bold energy to like get shit moving with your finances. You may be, it may be a time where you're making really big, bold moves, where you are thinking ahead, where you are going after the things that you want financially and you're just feeling very happy and alive and vivacious about it. And so it's a really beautiful time. So on the 3rd of July, we're going to have the full moon happening in the sign of Capricorn. And this is going to be a big deal as well for you because this is your seventh house. So right around the 3rd, as we basically start the month, you're going to be having a lot of conversations. You're going to be starting to feel very good in terms of where you're headed and, you know, in terms of finances and or very clear on what you want and how to get there in terms of finances, but in your own priorities. But there's also going to be something revealed or some kind of closure happening in terms of a relationship in your life, in terms of your significant relationship. So the Capricorn full moon could definitely be a time where you're really kind of reflecting back on your relationships, your friendships, and everything that has changed within these areas of your life for the past several years because you've been getting tons of construction happening in terms of your relationships and the people that you seek out to have significant close relationships with and your friendships, right? Because this full moon is going to be aspecting Jupiter. And so this is a time where major breakthroughs and feeling just this sense of appreciation, this sense of feeling like proud of yourself for all of the changes that you've made and all of the new foundations that you've laid in terms of your relationship sector can really come to fruition. Or if you're having some difficulties with a partnership or a relationship or a significant other, that can be kind of exposed at this time and a breakthrough can be had around this full moon in Capricorn on the third, where you start feeling more optimistic or you start feeling more, you know, you just start feeling better about the situation. It's like something is finally kind of coming to a head or coming to an end, or there's a chapter closing and you're kind of looking back and being like, wow, it's been a long road. It's been a long path, but I'm so glad that I've learned these lessons now, even though they've been difficult at times, you know, that's what I really see for you with that Capricorn full moon on the third. So let me know how that goes. So then on the 10th, we have a couple things happening. We have Mercury entering the sign of Leo, again, your second house sector, where your focus will start to shift towards, again, your finances, priorities, income, resources, needs, and uh, what you want to get out of that, what you want to achieve in that area. And then we also are going to have Mars moving into Virgo, your third house. So that is going to be a time where you start really wanting to organize some things. It's like there's something going on in your environment that you're wanting to improve, okay? Or there's something going on on a day-to-day basis that you're working on, like a project, improving something, really putting your energy and effort into improving what surrounds you and what you surround yourself with. So there's going to be a lot of energy and action being taken, taken on what's going on in your life on a day-to-day basis, how to fix certain things that are going on in your life, problem solving, and, um, you know, like how to really start getting organized in terms of who you're around, the people, places, and things that you surround yourself with and what you're doing on a day-to-day basis, what you're thinking about on a day-to-day basis. So I could see a lot of you like, you know, deciding that you want to move or you want to, you know, start working on some project to do with uh, maybe your home or um, the environment that you're in in some way, you know, like a room in your house or something like that, right? Like this is going to be a time where you are feeling a lot more busier as well again. And you're just feeling like, okay, like I have a lot of things on my schedule. I have a lot of meetings or a lot have a lot of appointments or I have a lot of things to do to get done. And I'm going to organize this and plan this. This is an excellent time for planning, for checking things off your to-do list, for getting shit done, for really just getting organized in your day-to-day life and in your routines and lifestyle and your environment, your actual physical environment. So that's also happening on the 10th and will continue for the rest of the month. So the rest of the month, you know, you're going to be feeling that organizational energy Um, And then on the 17th is where we have the really big transit happening of one of the biggest transits of the year, which is the nodal shift uh, that's moving into Aries and Libra and out of your 11th and 5th house houses and moving into your 10th and 4th house. So this is going to be a big shift. You know, over the last 18 months, you've learned a lot about the people that you surround yourself with 
Who's your ally? Who's not your ally? Who's your friend? Who's not your friend? The kinds of groups and circles that you belong in and the kind of groups and circles that you don't, you know? Um, and then also how to have fun, <laughs> the, the dangers of uh, having too much fun or, you know, really stewing on things that are toxic for you, inner child work, working on a lot of the urge or attraction to things that are maybe darker or mysterious that also may be toxic, you know? And so now that the nodes are shifting into your 10th and your fourth house, this is a huge transit. And I just went through it as a Leo rising with the nodes in my 10th and fourth house. So you're gonna be very, very focused on career to a, to a huge extent. I mean, it's gonna feel like this is what I wanna do. This is where I wanna go. This is what I want in terms of my career and my long-term goals and where I'm going in life. Like you're gonna be very future focused, okay? And then the south node is going to be in your fourth house though so it's like in order to do the things that you want for yourself for your future to to really embrace that drive and that motivation and that direction in terms of you know the future that you want it's like things need to really be balanced out or harmonized in terms of your family life okay in terms of your behind the scenes scenes life in terms of your personal life so you're going to see a lot of themes about balancing your public life with your private life your future future goals with your past, you know, your career with your family, right? And so, but the name of the game is really going to be about finding peace and harmony and balance within your home and private life and feeling really balanced there, like feeling like there is a balance, there is a consideration there versus doing what's best for you and maybe not being as considerate, you know? And so there's gonna be this kind of back and forth. And, you know, for some people, there can be more of a focus on the South Node for this transit. For others, there can be more of a focus on the North Node. So it just really depends, you know? But, um, and if you want more information on this specific transit, go to my 2023 year ahead horoscopes, because I went into a lot more detail on this transit and the bigger transits of the year. So I'm not gonna just repeat myself here, but um, those are gonna be the main things that you're gonna notice, like taking charge, taking the lead, going after what you want in the world, like embodying the, the leader that you are, the pioneer that you are, that like, you know, wants to go first, wants to explore the things that you haven't explored, the other places people won't go, you know, and like, but then there's also this compromise and this balance that needs to happen within the family and certain lessons that need to be learned with that. Where are you compromising too much of who you are and what you want for your family, right? Like that can come up too for a lot of cancer risings in the next 18 months. This is an 18 month cycle shift that's happening. Okay. So then also on the 17th, um, we're going to have Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, squaring Mercury in the sign of Leo. Um, and this can bring in some exaggeration and big, big time focus on networking and money and finances for a lot of you right around the 17th as well. So then the sun is going to move out of your sign on the 22nd and move into the sign of Leo, where again, a massive focus will be on your priorities, your finances, your resources. And then on the 22nd as well, Venus is going to go retrograde in the sign of Leo. So it's also a big, bigger transit of the year. Uh, and Venus retrograde is all about reflecting on our values, reflecting on our desires, reflecting on what we want, what we love, what is meaningful to us, you know, and what feels good to us, right? If we're in alignment with that. So Venus retrograding in your second house in Leo is going to be reflecting on a lot of those things, especially when those things relate to your money, income, resources, and finances, right? And what's in alignment for you. And this Venus retrograde is going to last for the next month or two. So, um, you know, you really want to pay attention from the 22nd onward to what gets brought up in your life or what's been getting brought up in your life right before this transit happens, because you're going to be kind of coming back to it and re-exploring your really, your, your heart's desires in terms of what you want financially with money and your priorities. So then on the 26th, uh, Venus retrograde is going to conjunct Mercury uh, again in your second house in Leo. So this is going to be a major moment of clarity or maybe communicating some things or having some conversations about what it is that you actually desire right around on the 26th. So pay attention to that because you're going to get clarity on the lessons of this transit at that time. So then on the 31st, last but not least, Jupiter is going to trine Mars and Virgo. And so Mars and Jupiter will trine. This is a really great positive energy for improving that whatever it is that you're working on, that you're improving around you on a day-to-day -day basis. 
whatever it is that you're you know busy doing on a day-to-day -day basis around this time whatever project you're working on whatever you're sharing could have to do with networking maybe you're working on a social media project or you're working on a networking project or a marketing project or maybe you are working on something going on around you that somehow deals with a group of people of like-minded people or clients or business or something like that and so it's like you kind of start seeing some positive results or some positive aspects of whatever it is that you're working on right around the end of the month so that is what i see for you this month cancer uh, there's a lot going on let me know down below what you think about it if a lot of this you could see happening or if you're already kind of seeing how things are building to some of these things what you think some of this stuff is going to mean for you let me know down the down below if I could talk comment the word bad ass if you stayed for your whole horoscope I cannot talk I just called you a whore I think but I did not mean to <laughs> let me know down below I love you and uh, I will see you guys in the next one bye Alrighty, my lovely Leo risings welcome to your horoscope for July 2023 I hope you guys are doing well so July is a month okay July is a month there's a lot going on and for you as a Leo rising, a lot of this is going to be focused, at least for the first half of the month, around you needing to take a step back, reevaluate, reflect, rest, go within. So the first half of the month, it may feel like you don't have time to do what you really want to do. It may feel like you don't have time to like step away, to take a break, to, to pull back, but you want to so bad. It's like something is urging you to be out of the spotlight right now. And that's because... If you are a Leo rising watching this, cancer season is your 12th house. So this is a time where you are like, it is time to go within, pull back, go on vacation, go on a spa, go on a retreat, you know, freaking just rest, you know, like just get out of your day-to-day -day routines for a little bit, you know, and, and focus on you, go inward, find out what's important for you. And so this can be a season of endings. This can be a season of purging, detoxing. This can be a season of getting rid of old things, you know, that are no longer old attachments, old things from the past that are just no longer contributing to who you are and where you want to go right now. And so at first it can feel a little bit like, oh, there's so many things I want to do, but I'm just not feeling it right now. You know, you can feel, it can bring up a, a, a more sensitive emotional energy of just wanting to pull back, wanting to separate, wanting to you know, just get away from your normal day-to-day -day life. And that is very, very common with this being the 12th house season for us. So Leo rising as well. Remember, I'm already feeling this. So I'm sure a lot of you are too. But so the first through the ninth, we are going to have Venus conjunct Mars in our sign. So this is a time, a really exciting, beautiful time where we are going to be full of desire, full of passion, full of pleasure. Like we're really going to be feeling aligned with who we are and what we want, our confidence, our, <laughs> you know, our bravado, like our bodies, our appearance. So this could definitely be a time where like our intentions and our desires and what we love and what we want is really being amplified and we have the energy to go and get it, right? And so the first like 10 days of the month are really beautiful for that. It's like, ooh, I am feeling who I am. I am feeling what I'm confident about. I am feeling this sense of empowerment. And I want to go after like what I want and what I desire. So there can be a huge just boost of confidence that comes in that first 10 days of the month. So really watch out for that. So then also on the third, we're going to have a Capricorn full moon. And this is happening in our sixth house. And I think this is going to be very good for us because if you've been feeling kind of lost or out there or just like, I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing anymore, or I just want to take a break or I just want to like relax and like focus on me or like do something a little bit more behind the scenes, you know, this Capricorn full moon is coming in to be like, okay, hey, how do you need to restructure your routine? How do you need to restructure your day to day life, your work for it to feel aligned, especially with your mental health, especially with your emotional health, especially with your spiritual health. And so this is going to give us some really big clues, some really big clarity on like what needs to change physically within our day-to-day -day lives, within our day-to-day -day work and our career, especially for us to feel more aligned to like want to move forward. So this is a big deal. 
Capricorn full moon on the 3rd. Watch out for those themes. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to get a video on it or do a video on it yet. So just, yeah, but those are the things that we're really going to experience. And I think it's going to be very helpful because I think right now things may feel very unstructured for a lot of Leo risings. And we may be a little bit lost on how to structure it all in a way that feels safe and secure and stable and like a good foundation for us to build upon, especially in terms of work and career. And so if you're feeling that way, I feel like this Capricorn full moon is going to come in and remind us like, hey, this is what you need to do. This is the structure you need to build. This is the routine you need to have in order to be successful, in order to really reach those big long-term visions and goals that we have for ourselves regarding career. And we can feel really accomplished around that time as well. So then on the 10th, we're going to have Mars entering the sign of Virgo and leaving our sign. So a lot of our motivation, our energy, our action is going to be put towards our finances, our priority, our income, our resources. Like we are going to be really ready to start taking action on these things. Like, okay, I need to do this and how we need to organize these things, right? Like what needs to be organized? What is a priority in terms of our resources, our finances, and how can we maneuver these things and organize these things and fix some of these issues that are going on in this area. So that's going to be a huge, huge theme for the rest of the month after the 10th, even moving into August as well. And so really watch out for that. So then on the 10th as well, Mercury is going to be moving into the sign of Leo, into our first house. So we're going to be feeling very expressive. <laughs> we're going to be feeling like we want to speak, we want to communicate, we want to speak up, we want to speak our opinion, we want to tell the world about how we're feeling, what's on our hearts, and you know, and we can kind of speak before we think at times, or we can speak in very loud and bold ways, dramatic ways that may, you know, cause ripples at times, but it's like, you know, Mercury and Leo is like, look, like I'm speaking from my heart and I'm speaking up and I'm speaking from a place of bravery, right? And so that's going to be really, really huge um, as well for the rest of the month after the 10th as Mercury is in our, in our first house. And so then on the 17th, we have the Cancer New Moon, which is going to finally be kind of the new beginning period of this month where we're like, oh, okay, I get it now. I get what needs to happen behind the scenes or subconsciously or with my old patterns or what I need to heal or what I need to reflect on or what I need to pull away from or what I need to end, whatever, to create more of a sense of stability within my day-to-day -day life, more stable habits, more stable work environment, you know, more stable routine, more stable diet, etc. It's like that Cancer New Moon is going to bring a lot of clarity with it. So just pay attention to that around the 17th. And then also on the 17th, we have the other really, really big transit happening this month. One of the biggest transits of the year. And this is where the nodes are finally going to shift from our fourth and 10th house of Scorpio and Taurus into our third and ninth house of Libra and Aries. So it's going to be a massive shift where we've been the past 18 months focused a lot on home, family, personal life versus future versus career versus where we want to go in the world, our long-term goals, you know? So these two polarities have kind of been back and forth. Um, our past versus our future, you know, like our private life versus our public life. And so the nodes have been teaching us a lot of different lessons in these areas of our lives. And so when they, when they switch into Aries and Libra, it's going to be our third and ninth house. So it's going to be a lot more informational, a lot more about learning, a lot more about travel, a lot more about growing and expanding through knowledge and through our different environments, through the different experiences that we have throughout life. And so it's going to be really, really interesting. And if you would like more on what this nodal shift could bring up, definitely go check out my 2023 year ahead horoscopes because I went into a lot of detail, a lot of depth in that video for each sign for the nodal shift because that's one of the biggest transits of the year and I went into like the the big transits of the year in that video so go check that out if you want a little bit more on that but also on the 17th or I'm sorry not on the 17th on the 22nd <laughs> we're gonna have the Venus retrograde happening so Venus is finally gonna go retrograde and this is also a really big deal for us especially because it's in our sign it's in the sign of Leo so Venus is going to literally retrograde in our sign so this is going to be about 40 days of us really reflecting from the 22nd onward what our values are, what we love, what we want, what we desire, our appearance, our body, who we are, our identity. All of these things are going to be very, very big, 
right? Like what is in alignment with what we love? What is in alignment with what we want? What is in alignment with what we desire? And also how, you know, our, our relationships may play into that as well, because Venus also rules relationships, okay? We may also see our career playing into this as well, who we are in terms of the spotlight, in terms of the public eye, in terms of our future, in terms of our goals, in terms of what we want to create in the world, right? And so this is a really, really big deal for Leo rising. So pay attention, sweet cheeks, <laughs> around the 22nd when Venus goes retrograde and, you know, for the next like month or so after that. So then also on the 26th, Venus retrograde is going to conjunct Mercury. So a few days after it retrogrades, it's going to conjunct the planet of Mercury. So this could be a decision that we're making that we may have to come back to and reflect on later since Venus is retrograding or a realization that we're having from this Venus retrograde, some information that's coming in about this Venus retrograde for us and what it has to do with. So pay attention to that. It could be speaking up about our values, speaking up about what we want, speaking up about our heart's desires and what's in alignment with that and what's not making a decision you know about those things as well so really pay attention to the 26th so on the 31st last but not least we have jupiter trining mars in virgo so jupiter's in taurus trining mars in virgo this is our second and tenth house so this is going to bring up a lot of career related topics future and goal related topics with financial priorities you know things like that so it looks like we're having a lot of success in improving whatever we are improving or fixing or organizing within our financial situation, within our resources and our priorities. And that success is really, really helping in terms of career or one or the other. The success in the career is really helping in terms of financially, right? Like either way, our financial and career related houses are really lit up and bringing great assistance around this time to each other. So um, right around the 31st. So watch out for that. You know, it could be a few days before, a week before. So just kind of be on the lookout for that. So that is what I'm seeing for us this month. If you are Leo rising, definitely let me know down below if this resonated and if you could see a lot of these things happening for you or if you already see certain things kind of unfolding in your life right now that you could see leading to some of these things that I named off. So um, also, if you watched this all the way through, comment your rising sign down below and also comment the word badass so I know that you stayed all the way through and that you are a badass for doing so. So I love you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Virgo Risings. Let's get down to business, shall we? So welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So for you, Virgo, July is a lot about your social situations. Like what are the connections in your life that feel like they are from a very heart-based place? Like, can you be vulnerable with the people in your life? Who are the people in your life? Who is your tribe? Who do you connect with? Who is your kind of like friend, but family, you know, kind of group? And then also, it's very much about going within and finding out what is really, really authentic to who you are, what is really, truly authentic to you, what is aligned with you, finding your insecurities and, you know, the things behind the scenes that you shine for, but that you don't show, right? And then also your belief systems, maybe travel, things like this are going to be also a really big deal for you in the month of July. So let's get into it. So we start off July from the 1st to the 9th with Venus in her conjunction with Mars in the sign of Leo in your 12th. So this is a really amazing time when Venus and Mars come together. It really aligns our desires and what we want and what we love with taking action. It really shows us how to go after the things that we desire, the things that we want. And so for you, this is happening in your 12th house. So it is kind of bringing to light some things that may be subconscious, like subconscious desires, subconscious ones, like subconscious, you know, things that you love, etc. cetera, uh, for you to really look at, you know, like, are you subconsciously holding yourself back? Are you, are you in some kind of self-sabotaging pattern? Um, even though, you know, like there's something else that you want, maybe you're like, holding yourself back from it, right? So these are things that you could really, really see come up. You could also see like, you know, old relationship patterns coming up or old cycles coming up that you're working through, you know? And so this is going to be really big for like the first like nine to 10 days of the month of July. So pay attention to that. And then on the third, we're going to have the Capricorn full moon, which is happening in your fifth house. So this is a time that could bring up the theme of children, 
passion, play, fun, and pleasure, but it could be at a time where you're getting, like something's being revealed, where there's a chapter that's kind of ending in this area where it's like, you know, I have kind of kept to myself for long enough or been very rigid and structured about like how I allow myself to have fun or go after the things I want in life. And now I just want to connect. Like now I just want to connect with different people, the people that are right for me, you know, things like this could come up around this Capricorn full moon. So on the third, so watch out for that. So then on the 10th, we have Mars entering your sign Virgo. So this is really exciting. So from the 10th for the rest of the month, you're going to have Mars in your sign. So you're going to be feeling very motivated, very energized, and very busy. <laughs> this is a very busy month for you. You're really going to be feeling like you're putting a lot of your energy, a lot of effort, a lot of action, a lot of focus towards yourself, right? So this could be a time where you start feeling like, okay, it's time to get back into the gym. It's time to start organizing yourself, basically. It's time to start problem solving yourself. So whatever issues you feel like you're having with yourself, this is the time where you're going to start fixing them and solving them and going, you know, taking the action on them, right? Um, so again, this could be a great time to get into a new fitness routine or a new diet or a new workout or something like that. It's like, improving yourself is going to be a really, really huge focus at this time. But you also want to be careful because with Mars in your first house, you could start feeling like just very edgy, very agitated, very frustrated a lot, like, you know, with other people or et cetera, like it's just, or with yourself even, right? Like, so you'd have to watch out for that to not try to take it too far or push it to an extreme uh, when it really doesn't need to be, right? So then on the 10th as well, we're going to have Mercury moving into your 12th house of Leo. So again, there's going to be a lot of reflecting, a lot of revisiting of maybe old patterns, old cycles from the past um, that deal with your heart, that deal with your inner child, that deal with your confidence, that deal with your empowerment and how to work through some of those things. So then on the 17th, we're going to have the new moon in Cancer in your 11th house. Again, a massive new beginning happening with your network, with the people that you you know, are in acquaintance with, with your allies, with the people that you know, um, maybe a new group of people comes into your life or a new kind of social group comes into your life or you start meeting new people around this time. So that's going to be really cool. And then on the 17th, we have the biggest transit of the month, basically one of the biggest transits of the year, which is the nodal shift. So the nodes are switching out of Taurus and Scorpio where they've been since basically the beginning of 2022. And they are shifting into your uh, second and eighth house. So this is going to be a time where you know, you've been really focused on your beliefs, your environment, getting out of messy, chaotic environments and focusing on a more simplistic life and lifestyle and your beliefs and what you want out of life, what really gives you spiritual purpose and meaning in life. And now this, the focus is going to shift towards your finances, to your money, to shared finances and resources, finances and resources that are tied up with other people or that you share with other people. So this is going to be a time where you could really start taking charge, taking action, where you're going to be really pushed to take action, take charge, take leadership, right? Be the pioneer in terms of your money or dealing with other people's money, dealing with debt, dealing with, you know, loans, dealing with whatever, right? It's going to be a time where you're going to be asked to kind of step into this leadership role financially, you know, and how to really organize, balance, and harmonize your own finances um, and how to find peace with your own sense of resources and finances, and then also how to go after what you want in terms of dealing with other people's finances or shared finances and resources. And so it's also going to lead you into learning a lot more about the occult or taboo related topics or hidden topics and our power, things like this. If you would like more details on what this could bring up for you, go check out my 2023 horoscopes predictions um, for the whole year ahead. I went over all the big transits for 2023. This is one of them, the nodal shift. So go watch that for your sign if you would like more information on this nodal shift and how it's going to affect your rising sign. But that's just kind of, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, the basis of it, right? So then uh, on the 22nd, Venus is going to retrograde in the sign of Leo in your 12th house. So there's going to be a lot of reflecting from the 22nd onward, as there already has been for several weeks now before this. Um, there's going to be a lot of reflecting from the 22nd until for most of the month of August as well. Basically, really the whole month of August as well. Um, as Venus is retrograding in your 12th house of Leo. So this is like a massive reflection period on like letting go 
of certain things in your life, but also like finding your sense of pride, finding your sense of confidence, finding out what your heart really, really wants and what's in alignment with that, right? Like what you really, truly desire, you know, and it may be very subconscious or very hidden, or you maybe it, maybe you've been avoiding it, you know, but this is a time where Venus retrograding in your 12th is really going to pull your focus into these things, into these topics. It's like, man, like I have not been living the life I want to live, or I've not been going about things in the way I want to go about things, or I have not been like actually fulfilling my desires, you know, taking action on my desires or living from my heart because maybe I've had all these fears or, you know, like all these problems with like, you know, like not wanting to sacrifice my pride or not wanting to end up in some old vicious cycle, you know, something like this is going to start happening from the 22nd and including into August where you're really going to be reflecting on these things. So really watch out for that. So then on the 26th, Venus retrograde is going to conjunct Mercury, which should give you some clarity or some pieces to the puzzle of what this Venus retrograde, the topics that this Venus retrograde is bringing up for you. Then on the 31st, Jupiter in Taurus is going to be on a trine with Mars in your first Virgo. This is really, really optimistic, beautiful energy, expansive energy that's really bringing in a new way of looking at things, a higher perspective on yourself on who you are, your identity, your appearance, who you are in your life, your own sense of purpose and self. Like all of that is really gonna come through on the 31st. You could start learning a new subject or exploring a new phil philosophy or traveling or something like that. But there's some kind of experience coming in that's like expanding who you are in some way around the end of the month on the 31st or even like a few days to a week before you could start experiencing that. So let me know down below, Virgo, if any of this feels like holy shit, yes, I can see that happening or that sounds really similar to something that's already happening that is going to probably play into something like that. Like, let me know down below. I want to hear all the details. I want to hear your feedback. It, it means so much to me when you do. Also, comment your rising sign down below and comment the word badass so that I know you watched all the way through. I appreciate you. You are a badass and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Libra Rising. So welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing really well. So for the month of July, Libra Risings, this month for you is a very social month. It's a it's a month where you're really exploring like networking and meeting new people, but you're also really kind of focused on like your career and your long-term goals, your future, the things that you want to do and being seen within your career because the sun and Mercury for a small part of the month is moving through your 10th house of career and future and goals, your public image, like putting yourself out there, all of that. But then you're also going to have like this focus on really improving your behind the scenes life and how your behind the scenes life, how certain subconscious or unconscious habits or addictions or cycles are really actually maybe in the way or causing issues to your public life, right? Like your public life, your social life, etc. And so that is what this month is really, really about for you. So let's go ahead and dive in. So first, um, from the first to the ninth, we're going to have Venus coming in to her conjunction with the planet of Mars. And this is a really beautiful transit and especially for you because you're ruled by Venus. So this is a transit that is really going to bring together like your desires and your wants and your like, you know, know, the things that bring you enjoyment and pleasure and fulfillment into action and passion and like really like a lot of energy, you know, so we're going to really be feeling like a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of fulfillment and being able to kind of go after your desires and what you want in terms of your friends, your ambitions, your aspirations, your social life, etc. So again, this is going to bring like a lot of bold, brave, exciting, fun and playful energy into your social life into your network you're going to be connecting with a lot of different people you're going to be spending time with a lot of different friends you know and so you're really going to be really feeling like you just want to put yourself out there and just this energy of confidence and you know being alive and just passion you know like empowerment and so it's going to be a really beautiful time like that first week or so of july then on the third, we also have the Capricorn full moon, which is happening in your fourth house. So this is also going to be a time where you are closing chapters or having certain revelations or realizations where certain things are being revealed in terms of your family, your private life, and your personal life, your home life, right? So it's like you're closing.
closing a chapter here. It's like something from the past is kind of, you know, being closed out or uh, something is revealed in terms of these topics as well. Um, this full moon in Capricorn is a really positive one though because it's making a really positive aspect to Jupiter in your eighth. And so it's like certain financial things, you know, uh, financial goals or uh, financial successes are somehow relating to your family, your personal life, your behind the scenes life. Maybe you're buying a house or maybe you're closing a chapter, you know, that's bringing in a lot of success and making you just feel like appreciative, you know, making you just feel like, damn, like I worked hard for this and it's finally paying off. You know, it's like something is paying off. That's kind of the feeling of this full moon in Capricorn. It's a beautiful one. And I really hope I have time to film it <laughs> um, because yeah, I, I really want to. It's a really cool full moon. So anyway, around the 10th, we have Mars moving into the sign of Virgo, which is your 12th house. So this is where things could shift a little bit for you, right? Mars moving into Virgo in your 12th house is going to dampen a little bit of your energy. You're going to be feeling a lot of behind the scenes energy. Like you're going to feel pulled in the direction of focusing on things that are out of the spotlight, so to say. Like, oh, my subconscious patterns are needing to improve things that I've been avoiding or needing to work on things or fix things that I have been neglecting, right? Like things like that could come up, breaking old cycles or patterns, you know, things with your health or subconscious or mental health kinds of topics could come up around this time where it's like, oh, I need to finally improve this. I've been putting it off for so long. I've been neglecting it or avoiding it for so long. Mars in your 12th is going to be like, okay, I need to do this, right? But you could feel a little bit like not anything too crazy, but you could feel a little bit more drained than usual with Mars moving through your 12th because that self will, that motivation, that energy is in your 12th house of, you know, things that are behind you or hidden or leaving or letting go, you know? So it's like, you're letting go of a lot. You're purging a lot. Maybe you're going through a detox or something, but it's like you're letting go or fixing or actually taking the action on old habits that are no longer aligned or in your path. And so this is an energy though that could feel a little draining not anything too crazy but it just may feel like you're a little more tired or you just don't have as much energy as you normally have and so that could happen with mars moving through your 12th from the 10th for the rest of the month basically and then also on the 10th mercury is going to move into leo again your 11th house so you're going to be socializing you're going to be connecting making new connections there's going to be a lot of plans a lot of busyness going on with friends and groups and people and networking and marketing and all these kinds of things could be coming up for that time. So then we don't have anything happening really like too crazy from the 10th to the 17th, but on the 17th, we have the new moon in Cancer in your 10th house. So this is where you really get that fresh start, that new beginning, that energy. It's like all the lessons are kind of coming together for you to really start this new chapter in your career, in your future, in your goals, in your public life. And so that's going to be really aligning around that Cancer new moon. And then on, also on the 17th, we're going to have one of the biggest transits of the year happening. And this is the nodal shift to Aries and Libra from Taurus and Scorpio. So the nodes have been in your second and eighth house, your financial house for the last 18 months. So there's been a pretty big focus there. You've been getting pushed to like really learn lessons and focus there for the last 18 months. But now it's going to be moving to Aries and Libra. So the south node is going to be moving into your sign Libra and the north node is going to be moving into your opposite sign of Aries, which is in your seventh house of relationships. So there's going to be a huge balance that starts happening, a huge focus, a karmic and faded focus that begins to happen between you and your identity and what you want and what you're going after versus what other people want, your relationships, you know, things like this. So it's going to really push you to set aside your own sense of identity and leadership and confidence within a relationship and also where you come where like your personality and who you are is too compromising where you compromise too much or where you you know get too obsessed with har harmony and peace and trying to balance things out to where you may avoid conflict in relationships or with other people like these are really big lessons that could start coming up with the nodal shift now it's happening on the 17th you may not notice it right away um, but it's going to be there for the next 18 months so this is a long cycle so just prepare for the next 18 months beyond the 17th to start seeing a lot of these lessons with self and identity versus other and relationships. I went, in, I went into a lot more detail about this in my 2023 year ahead horoscopes for each sign. So if you want to know more details on that, definitely go watch that video. So 
Then on the 22nd, Venus, your ruling planet is going retrograde, which is a really big deal and also one of the big transits of the year. Plus, she's your chart ruler if you are a, if you are a Libra rising. So this is a really big deal for you. Your chart ruler is literally going retrograde, which doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, it happens like every 18 months or so. So with Venus going retrograde in your 11th house, this is a really big deal. So you've already had this massive focus on friends and groups and allies and connecting with different people and networking and, you know, meeting all kinds of different people or marketing, etc. But with Venus going retrograde here, you're going to be reflecting on a lot of these things. You're going to be reflecting on what you really desire and how you really want to show up in terms of your friends and social groups and social circles. And if those social circles and social groups are really aligned with your heart's desires, are really aligned with your interests, are really aligned with what you want in your life, your aspirations. And so this is going to be a big reflection period from the 22nd of July and pretty much the whole month of August as well um, of you going back and really reevaluating your aspirations, your desires, your friends, and what really feels like a heart aligned connection to you, you know? So then on the 22nd, Venus retrograde is going to conjunct Mercury in Leo. So this could be a really big realization, a big conversation, some news or some information that happens that really has you reflecting and rethinking or that you, you kind of start realizing some things and you start coming out or communicating about that right around the 22nd. So watch out for that because it's going to give you a really big clues just a few days after Venus goes retrograde as to what this retrograde is going to actually be about for you. So then on the 31st, last but not least, Mars in Virgo is going to try and Jupiter in Taurus from your 12th to your 8th house. So this could be a time where you start seeing the potential in a financial situation or some kind of financial thing that's going on or you're diving deep into maybe esoteric or taboo or occult practices that are really helping you improve things behind the scenes. But either way, there's kind of an expansive energy happening here with Mars and Jupiter where it's like you finally have the energy and the feeling of optimism and the feeling of expansion to do the behind the scenes things that you're trying to do at the end of the month. So anyways, Libra, that is what I'm seeing for you for the month of July. Let me know down below if this resonated or if you can see it resonating for you. I'd really love to know. Also comment the word badass with your rising sign down below to let me know that you stayed all the way through because if you did you are indeed a badass and thank you guys so so much to, for watching send this to your friends your family etc so they can check out their horoscope for the month and i will see you in the next one Bye. Woo, scorpio risings this is a huge huge month for you in terms of your career your social life like what you believe, what you want, what gives you a sense of meaning and purpose in the world. And I'm so, so excited to talk about it for you. So this month is a lot about your career, your long-term goals, your long-term visions, the things that you want and desire long-term for yourself. And it also may involve, you know, kind of leaving behind old things that no longer fit you or suit you. It may involve you seeing things from a new perspective or getting out of your comfort zone, maybe taking a trip or traveling and, and really seeing things in a new way. Way, um, or just learning new information that you know helps you see things in a new way it can involve like teaching and learning pursuits and things like that but a lot of it is really centered on and focused on your career and what you need to do or how you need to prepare to get to where you want to go in your long-term goals in your long-term visions etc so we're gonna talk about it for Scorpio rising let's get into it so the first through the 9th of July we are gonna have Venus coming into her conjunction with the planet of Mars. This is a very spicy, pleasurable, desirable transit because Venus and Mars are opposites. They're literally like the feminine and masculine energy and they're coming together in the sign of Leo, which is a huge deal for you. This is your 10th house, okay? So this is a time where you are really like, you know, going after what you want and desire from a heart-led place in your career, like, and in your long-term goals, in your vision for the future. So this is a time where you're really gonna be feeling amped up, where you're really gonna be feeling like all into the fun and desire and play of what you love to do in your life and in your career and with your long-term goals and visions. It's like, I have this desire. I have this thing that I want to do within my long-term goals or within my career, within like something that's going to add to my future or catapult me in this 
direction that I want to go in. And you have the energy to back that up. You have the self-will, the action, etc., to back that up these first nine days of the month, right? So this is a beautiful transit that's really bringing things together for you in terms of your career and the direction you're going in life. It, for some of you, it may not be about your career. It may just be, this is a goal I have, or this is a direction I'm trying to go in, right? For others of you, it may be career, more career and professional related. But either way, it's like, this is who I want to be in the world. This is where I want to go. This is the next step. And I have the immense amount of energy to like back that shit up, right? Like, so I really love this for you, like the first like nine to 10 days of the month. Then on the 10th, we have Mars moving into the sign of Virgo. Now, this is also a really big deal because Mars is your ruler in traditional Hellenistic astrology, which is what I, uh, <laughs> which is what I go by. And Mars in your 11th house in Virgo is you really organizing, cleaning up, you know, finding solutions and fixing things in terms of your network, your friend groups, your social life, the social groups that you belong to, certain allies, like the people that you know that help you advance in life. Like this is your community basically, right? Like this is your friend groups, this is your social life. These are the people that help you improve and get to where you wanna go. So you, when Mars enters here, that's also gonna be a really big focus and you're gonna start cleaning some of these things up here. So then on the 17th, even more so what I just said gets amplified by this Cancer new moon happening in your ninth house. Again, kind of, you know, you cleaned up your reality, you cleaned up your day-to-day -day life, you're closing chapters there, you're restructuring that, which allows you to like go where you wanna go. So this could be a travel pursuit, a learning pursuit, you know, something that somehow contributes to these future long-term goals, to your career, to you know your future, whatever it is, this vision that you have for yourself long-term is being really amplified with this Cancer New Moon it's like a new beginning, you know, a new chapter that's starting of like learning or traveling or a new perspective or something that's getting you out of your comfort zone so you can go do what you wanna do, right? And so that's what this Cancer New Moon is really gonna be about for you on the 17th, Scorpio. So then also on the 17th, we have one of the biggest transits of 2023. And this is the nodal shift into Libra and Aries. So the nodes have been in Scorpio and Taurus for the last 18 months. So the south node has been moving through your sign Scorpio, which probably has not been easy the last 18 months. You've had to learn a lot of karmic lessons and let go of a lot of who you thought you were. Let go of a lot of your identity, you know, and really deal with the complicated, complex, chaotic inner parts of yourself, right? A lot of shadow work probably, you know, like let me know how it's been for below for you as a Scorpio rising. I'd really honestly love to hear your feedback of how this south node moving through your rising sign your first house has been since i want to say january 2022 the end of january 2022 so it's been a while you know and then also you know the north node moving through your seventh house of relationships and like pushing you to like let go of all the complicated chaotic bullshit within you that you base your identity off of or all the darkness or the mysteriousness or whatever within you that you base your identity off of and lean more towards the simplicity the beauty the comfort the security of taurus right in relationships right so it's probably required you to like shed a lot get really vulnerable learn a lot of lessons for uh about yourself which maybe they all haven't been bad right like it probably has helped you become way more solid and secure and internally aligned with who you really are but i'm just just saying <laughs> for some people it may have not been easy so let me know how it's been for you down below but on the 17th the nodes will shift into Aries and Libra which is your 12th house and your sixth house so then the energy will shift the karmic and faded energy will shift for the next 18 months uh, on July 17th where there will be a large focus on your behind the scenes life what you do behind the scenes what you kind of keep hidden from yourself or from others and uh, subconscious patterns, habits, mental health, you know, maybe relationship things that are going on behind the scenes and um, where you are subconsciously maybe being too considerate or subconsciously maybe not speaking up or not asserting yourself versus where you need to assert yourself and um, presume a leadership role, especially in your day-to-day -day life with your routines, with your work, with your job, right? And this is really going to push you into being more direct 
with what you want in terms of work, with taking more action in terms of work, health, and day-to-day -day routines, breaking old habits, breaking old addictions, breaking old patterns, you know, that's what the energy is really, really going to shift to. And if you would like more details on this, I went over a shit ton about this in my 2023 horoscopes for the year ahead for your rising sign. So go check that out if you want more information on what this nodal shift could bring into your life over the next 18 months because it is a big deal it's a huge huge deal so anyways on the 22nd venus is going to go retrograde in the sign of leo your 10th house of career future goals long-term goals your long-term vision etc the direction that you're going in so you're going to be really reflecting on what you really want here what you really desire where you really want to go in the world what you really want to experience like the goals that you have your vision that is all going to be kind of you know, being reflected on in terms of what your heart really wants, what's really valuable to you, what you really desire long term, and if it's what you thought it was, you know, and so on the 22nd, and basically for most of the month of August, you're going to be reflecting on this, right? So just be kind of prepared for that towards the end of the month, it could feel like, oh, okay, wait, I was kind of going in this direction. But is this really what I want? You know, something may come up to where you're like, is this really what I want? Is this really what I want to do? Are these the relationships I want to keep continuing with? Or are these connections in my career the ones I want to keep continuing with? Are these desires of this vision I have the ones that I want to really build off of? You know, like what does your heart want? That is going to be the biggest focus for this Venus retrograde in Leo. What is aligned with your heart? What is aligned with who you are? What is aligned with your sense of identity? What is aligned with your desire? What is your true heart's desire? That is what you're going to be reflecting on. So on the 26th, you'll probably get some clarity or some kind of message about whatever this Venus retrograde is going to be about for you. So a few days after on the, from the 22nd, and then we have the 26th, right? Venus retrograde is on the 22nd. And then on the 26th, she's going to conjunct Mercury in your 10th house, which is going to give you some information, some updates, some, you know, downloads, some synchronicities, some thoughts, whatever it is, something's going to come in and you're like, oh, you know, and like you're thinking you're going to get a sign as to what this Venus retrograde is about for you. So watch out for the 26th. Then on the 21st, last but not least, Mars and Virgo in your 11th house of your social life is going to trine Jupiter in your seventh house of Taurus of your relationships. And so your social life and your relationships are great, getting along great here. This is very groovy. It's like you are seeing the potential, the long-term potential for some of the people in your life and the improving and fixing and work that you've been doing here. Um, and you know, maybe you and a partner are going to some event or going to something with friends or something like that, but there's just a really good vibey energy here that makes you feel like, oh wow, like this is going to help us or this is going to this is bringing out a lot of the potential or a lot of expansion or amplifying you know this situation in some way it's like you're you're really vibing in your social life and in your relationship life at the very end of the month so that is what i see for you scorpio let me know down below if you could see these things happening if you could already see like some things happening in your life currently that you could see leading up to some of these topics make sure to come back and watch at the end of the month too i find that that's really really fucking helpful and also if you watch this whole horoscope just now comment your your rising sign scorpio down below in the word badass so i know because you are a fucking badass thank you i appreciate you and with that being said thank you guys so so much for watching i will see you guys in the next one Bye. Alrighty, Sagittarius arising. Welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are excited. This is a really big and exciting effing month that we have coming up here. So for you as a Sag rising, this month is a lot about your financial situation, getting that structured, getting that organized, while also getting deep into some of the things you need to get deep into to really you know, let go of some of the old things that are holding you back financially. But this month is also about coming into a sense of empowerment with what you believe, with, you know, what gives you meaning and purpose in your life with possibly travel or learning pursuits, education. And also, it's also very much about stepping into a new kind of chapter within your career and within your long-term goals and future. So that is what is really, really happening this month for you as a Sagittarius rising. Let's get into it. So from the 1st to the 9th of July, we're going to have Venus joining Mars in the sign of Leo. This is a really big deal. Um, so basically our desires, what we want, what we love, what brings us a sense of pleasure 
and just fulfillment in life is going to be backed up by like the energy and the motivation to go after it, right? So you could really find yourself just having a blast or having a lot of fun, whether it be traveling, learning new things, getting out of your comfort zone, educating yourself on new topics, and just really going after the things in life that give you a sense of meaning and purpose and that give your heart a sense of meaning and purpose. Like this is about following your heart, having new experiences, getting out of your comfort zone, you know? So that's going to be really, really big for you the first like 10 or so days of July. Sad. So you're really going to be like, you know what? I want something more. I want something bigger. I want to look at things from a higher perspective. I want to experience more with my life. I want to do more with my life. I want to really step into my full potential, you know? And so that's going to be really happening those first like 10 days of the month. You're really going to feel that. So then on the third, we have a Capricorn full moon, which is happening in your second house. So this is some kind of chapter closing or some kind of peak or something being revealed in terms of your finances, your priorities, your resources. It's like where you need to get back to a grounded sense in this area or a realistic sense in this area or do some restructuring, some construction in this area, but it's going to pay off immensely and it's going to go towards, you know, your job or the things that, you know, you really want to achieve or do on a day-to-day basis. So this is definitely going to fall in line with your day-to-day work, your day-to-day life, your day-to-day projects, your day-to-day lifestyle, your day-to-day health. You know, it's like something here is really uh, connecting and you're feeling very accomplished and very optimistic and like you can see a lot of potential here right around that full moon on the third. So then on the 10th, we're going to have Mars moving into your 10th house of Virgo. Now, this is going to be a big deal because you're going to start seeing a lot of your energy, focus, and motivation, and self-will really focused on moving forward in your life, moving forward in your career, moving forward in your long-term goals, and fixing anything that is out of whack here, organizing this area, restructuring this area, um, getting rid of things that aren't working, and bringing in things that do work, you know, just really kind of rearranging a lot of things in terms of your career. That's where your focus is going to be. How you can work smarter and not harder is also potentially going to be a big focus for you with Mars moving into Virgo in your 10th. So then on the 17th, we're going to have a new moon in Cancer. This is happening in your eighth house of other people's finances, shared finances and resources, investments, debt, you know, financial obligations or financial pursuits, things like this. So with this new moon happening here, it's like a new chapter is beginning here, like a fresh start is happening for you and you're going to be really focused on starting something new in this area or it could just come up automatically, right? So watch out for that around the 17th. And then also on the 17th, we have one of the biggest transits of the year happening, which is the nodal shift to Aries and Libra and out of Taurus and Scorpio. So the nodes have been in your 12th and 6th house for the last 18 months since the end of January, I want to say, 2022. So there's been a huge focus on basically cleaning out and detoxing and purging and letting go of all of the toxic shit in your subconscious and your behind the scenes life, old old habits, old cycles, old addictions, you know, things like that. You've just been really, really cleaning out and you've been focused on living a more simplistic life and lifestyle, focusing on the here and now, being present in the moment in your day-to-day life and work. And you've been really getting pushed towards that, finding the beauty and the pleasure and the abundance in your day-to-day life, even when it's hard and letting go of old habits and patterns that are just complex and chaotic and really self-sabotaging, you know? And so with the nodes finally moving out of these areas of your chart and into Aries and Libra, you're gonna go through a much lighter time than the last 18 months. It's gonna lighten up for you a lot because the south node is going to move into your Libra 11th house of friends, networks, and social environments. And the north node is going to move into your Aries 5th house of fun, play, pleasure, dating, romance, children, you know, entertainment, doing what you love and taking action on what you love and asserting yourself with what you love and your passions and all of that, your joy, what brings you a sense of joy in life, you know? And so it's really, really going to be a time where you get a lot more focused on your joy, your creativity, your passions, your entertainment, you know, maybe that's exerting more energy, getting out more, doing more things, hiking or exercising or whatever, you know, whatever is going to bring in that energy, but also bring in that joy. It's going to be huge for you. And it's also going to be a time where you're learning a lot of really karmic lessons about friends and social groups and how you may over compromise or 
avoid conflict in some of these areas socially uh, instead of going after what you really want and what is good for you because maybe you've been taught that that's selfish or something, right? And so this is what these lessons are going to be about for the next 18 months. This is a long-term cycle that's just starting on the 20, or on the 17th of July. So pay attention from the 17th onward. It may not hit right away, but you're going to start noticing it over these next over this next month or two at least. Um, and if you'd like more information and more details on that nodal transit, check out my 2023 horoscopes for the year ahead on here on my channel for each rising sign if you haven't seen that because I went into a lot more detail in that one. So then on the 22nd, Venus is finally going to go retrograde in the sign of Leo, which is another huge transit of 2023. Venus will retrograde in Leo in your ninth house. So this is going to be a time where you're really reflecting on learning pursuits, traveling pursuits, you know, where you're really reflecting on what you believe and what you want out of life, what gives you a sense of meaning and purpose in life, Sagittarius, like what you really desire, what experiences you really want to have long term and throughout your life, like your potential, you know, like that's going to be a really, really big thing for you um, with Venus going retrograde, maybe putting yourself out there more or publishing something in your name or something like that as well could come up around this Venus retrograde from the 22nd, basically, and also most of the month of August as well. So then on the 31st, last but not least, Mars and Virgo in your 10th house of career and long-term goals is going to try and Jupiter and Taurus in your sixth house of your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. So there's going to be a lot of positive momentum and energy happening between these two areas of your life, between your career and your work, your day-to-day -day work, or your career and your health, or your long-term goals and your day-to-day -day routines. You're going to be feeling a lot of potential, a lot of expansion to go after the things that you want to take action and feel motivated on going after the things that you want in your career and you're, that's gonna be backed up by certain routines, habits that you're implementing or a diet that you're implementing or uh, a work schedule that you're in, you know, et cetera. It's like you're really focused on expanding long-term and, and you're doing the day-to-day -day things to make that happen, you know, towards the end of the month. So I love that for you. So let me know down below, Sagittarius, if you could see this resonating for you for the month ahead, come back and let me know as well. And also comment the word badass down below with your rising sign. So I know that you watch this whole mother effing thing. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you. You are a badass and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Capricorn Risings, welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous at this time of year. So for the month ahead for you for July Capricorn, this month is a lot about your relationships, your close significant relationships, your partner, if you are in a committed partnership, but also it is about your finances, your resources, maybe your partner's resources, shared finances that you either have with your partner or with a bank or a loan or an investment, you know, things like this, like really growing your wealth and where you want to go with your wealth and what feels aligned and passionate to you. And it's also about your beliefs and travel and learning and, and where you want to go and what your what you feel your potential is, right? So it's a pretty big month. Uh, it's definitely bringing in some more play and romance um, and love and relationships, uh, but it's also really about you know, what needs to be aligned so things can change financially or go in the, the right direction that you want them to go in. But also you could find that there's a topic of, or a theme of like taboo things happening or getting into inner power work or getting into esoteric things as well. So let's get into it. So from the first to the ninth, we are gonna have Venus joining Mars in the sign of Leo of July. So this is gonna be a really big deal, okay? We have the planet of femininity, like meeting the planet of masculinity, right? So we have our desires, our wants, the things that we love, the things that we yearn for, sense of fulfillment and pleasure, really combining with the action, the willpower, the passion, the fire, you know, the determination to go do those things, to go after those, those things, to get what we want. So this is going to be a time where we are really going after what we want, where we really want to get what we want, right? And this is happening in your eighth house. And so this is going to be investments, finances, shared finances, shared resources, taboo topics, esoteric topics, you know, deeper topics that really fuel you forward, right? And so it's like, I really want this investment or I really want to take out this loan to like do the things that I want to do, you know, or to take this relationship to the next level or 
to take my life to the next level, right? Like it's like something is going on here that's really showing you what you want and what is motivating you, what desires are motivating you to move forward and what feels aligned and like a, a calling from your heart, right? But it could also feel like an act of bravery or a bold move to do it. It could feel like a risky move to do it, right? And so that's gonna be really big for you like that first you know, 10 or so days of the month. So just watch out for that. So then on the third, we have the Capricorn full moon happening in your sign. So sorry, I keep feeling like I have a cat hair somewhere on me and it's driving me nuts. But, um, but yeah, so we have a full moon in your sign on the third. So this is going to be a time where you are getting back to who you are, back to yourself, back to like being very grounded in who you are at this time and what you love and the passions that you have and the desires that you have and the things that you want because this full moon is going to be making a really positive aspect to Jupiter in your fifth house. So it could also connect you to your inner child. It could connect you to what you love. It could connect you to children in general if you have them you know but it's going to be a time of like you know this is me and i just want to enjoy things i just want to be present grounded in this moment and it's like yeah so this this full moon in capricorn on the third is going to really ground you and bring you back to that and so i think it's going to be really good for you and you're going to have a lot of like higher perspectives about who you are and what you want and all of that moving forward so then on the 10th we're going to have mars moving into the sign of Virgo, which is your ninth house. So there's gonna be a lot of action, a lot of activity, a lot of focus, a lot of determination, uh, and energy going towards your beliefs, maybe even travel, maybe learning pursuits, learning new things, taking new courses, or teaching other people in some way um, from you know the, the 10th for the rest of the month. So then also um, on the 17th, we finally have the new moon in Cancer, which is your seventh house of relationships. So this is going to be a brand new chapter in your relationships of really reconnecting emotionally to whoever you're with or the close people in your life, the significant people in your life. If you're not in a relationship, this is going to really bring up your emotional bonds and that emotional sense of familiarity in your relationships and like how you can start a new chapter here emotionally with the people in your life and, and develop that deep sense of like trust and security, that deep bond with other people. So that's going to start right around the 17th. And then also on the 17th, we have one of the biggest transits of 2023 happening, you guys, and that is the nodal shift into Aries and Libra, which for you is your fourth and 10th house. So this is a big, big, big mother effing deal for you, Capricorn, as you are a cardinal sign and your fourth and 10th houses are angular houses. So they are life-changing houses. So over the next 18 months from July 17th onward till the nodes move, 18 months from July 17th, they don't have the exact date right in front of me. So you're gonna have to do the math on this one, but it's gonna at least be for the rest of this year and then a lot of next year as well. But you are going to have a massive karmic faded focus shift into the areas of your fourth and 10th house. So this is your career, public life, long-term goals versus your family, personal life, and past. So this is gonna be the, the kind of axis that you are balancing or learning lessons with um, for the next 18 months. And I went into a lot of detail about this in my 2023 year ahead horoscopes for each sign here on my channel for free. You can go watch it if you would like more detail, but basically it is going to be a time where you are really unraveling who you've compromised yourself to be in terms of your public image, your reputation, your brand, your career, being in the public eye or your long-term goals. It's like you've, you've kind of, maybe you have compromised a lot to get to a certain place in these areas of life and then you begin to realize it's not really who you are or it's not really what you want right and so that could be one thing but for others <laughs> for other people it could just be that maybe certain relationships there's a lot of karmic relationships or connections involving your career or people in power or authority figures or you know whatever it is that you do for work or your long-term goals and you start realizing you know there's going to be basically a push to focus more on your personal and private life your home life your family the people that are close to you that support you and your internal foundation your personal foundation in your life that is going to be where your focus is shifted towards but you're also going to see a large focus and letting go or unraveling karmic things within your career and your long-term goals and if there's anything there that's not aligned or not really truly authentic with who you are um, and that really doesn't bring you a sense of peace 
and value or it's just a temporary sense of peace um, because you're compromising or being too considerate, then you're gonna realize that and you're gonna be pushed to like balance these two areas of life, be more of who you are and who like yourself unapologetically in your career and let go of trying to please everybody, you know, things like that. So those are just some of the lessons that you could see come up with this access in terms of your career and home life. Um, so yeah, just watch out for, for that. It may not all happen right on the 17th. It's, I mean, this is a long-term transit, so it may take a few weeks or a few months for you to start noticing these themes, but yeah. So then on the 22nd, we're going to have Venus going retrograde, which is another huge transit of this year. Venus is going to retrograde in your eighth house of Leo. So again, a lot about finances, shared finances and resources, investments, building wealth, your long-term goals and visions for your wealth, what really truly makes you happy and what feels aligned and, and in integrity in your heart in terms of your wealth and money and finances and who you align with regarding wealth, money, finances, and resources. So um, that's going to be really big. You're going to be reflecting on a lot of those things, going back and maybe cleaning up you know, some debt or getting things that are owed to you or you finally paying things that you owe, you know, things like that. So then uh, on the 31st, Jupiter and Mars are going to come into their trine. Mars is in Virgo, Jupiter is in Taurus. This is your ninth and fifth house. So it's almost like your passions and the things that you love, the things that are really bringing you a lot of joy and creativity and abundance and fulfillment in life right now are really aligning with this just higher vision and higher perspective and new beliefs that you may be forming or even old beliefs that are coming back that are just really ringing true for you now at this time. It's like you're really kind of adapting and you know restructuring your perspectives, your beliefs, your worldviews and your what you want to learn and what you want to do in the world, where you want to go, your potential, traveling, and all of that's really aligning with your creativity, your passions, your heart, the things that you love to do. Um, maybe even children, romance, or dating as well um, towards the end of the month, right around the 31st, maybe a few days before. So watch out for that. We end on a really positive, positive energy. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Capricorn Risings. Let me know down below if this resonated with you, if you could see a lot of these things happening already, if you could see your life going in this direction, let me know down below. Comment the word badass down below because you are a mother effing badass for watching this whole thing. And also make sure you tell me your rising sign so I know what rising sign you are and tell me if this resonated and all that. I love you guys. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. What is up my lovely Aquarius Risings and welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's get into it. So July for you Aquarius is a lot about your relationships. Like things are really spicing up in the relationship department, in the love department, in terms of your significant relationships, your significant other. This could be a really great and fabulous time to meet someone new if you're single or to like just really integrate and bring the love back in your connection if you're already in a relationship it's also going to be a month that's also kind of focused on your habits your health your work life and your day-to-day -day routines and things like that so that could also be something that you really notice coming up in the month of july so let's go ahead and get into it so first off from the first to the 9th of july we're going to have venus and mars coming into their conjunction and this is going to be really powerful because Venus is the planet of pleasure and femininity and like also desire and fulfillment and things that feel good, beauty and love. And Mars is the planet of passion and energy and willpower and action, right? Masculinity. And so we have both the planet of femininity and masculinity combining and joining in your seventh house of significant relationships in your life. So that's why I said this could be a really great month to meet someone new or to reignite that passion and that love within your relationship and, you know, really get to a more passionate and fulfilling level within your relationship. And so anyways, you're really going to be feeling social. You're really going to be feeling just empowered in terms of the connections in your life, really fired up, really spicy, really zesty, just really energetic about the relationships in your life. This is a time to really lean into more fun, more play, more lightheartedness and not take things so seriously, right? So anyways, on the third, 
of July, we're going to have the Capricorn full moon, which is happening in your 12th house. So this is going to be the first few days of July. It may also feel like you're kind of being pulled inward or you're being pulled back in some way, like you're taking a step back, you're reflecting, or something may happen that may cause you to kind of take a step back, to take some space for yourself, to take some time for yourself and get out of your ordinary day-to-day -day life in some way. So you can really kind of shed old patterns, old addictions, old habits, old things that are like really subconsciously controlling you or that are in your way of like doing the things that you want to do in your day-to-day -day life. And so that's what this full moon in Capricorn is going to be about. Um, and it may come with some themes of family, home life and personal life as well. You're just going to be really focused on going within, you know, your private life, your personal life and things going on there. And it's going to feel maybe like, you know, it could be a very accomplishing feeling, you know, so watch out for that around the third of the month around the Capricorn full moon. You could notice it like a week before as well. So then on the 10th, Mars is going to enter the sign of Virgo, uh, which is your eighth house. Sorry, I was looking at the chart a little weird there. It's your eighth house. So this is definitely going to be a time where you start really focusing and putting a lot more energy on organizing your finances, your wealth, your investments, maybe cleaning up or fixing or solving some debt issues that you may have. I mean, it's going to be you're going to be really deeply um, focused on this area and organizing this area of your life. You could also find that you're really focused a lot more on taboo things or esoteric things or things that are a little bit more mysterious or not always, you know, seen <laughs> in your life or in the public eye. So then uh, on the 17th, we finally have the Cancer New Moon. So a new chapter, a new beginning is starting in terms of your work, your health, and your day-to-day -day routines. So then also on the 17th, we have one of the biggest transits happening of 2023, and that is the nodal shift into Aries and Libra, which is your third and ninth house. So this is going to be a massive shift from focusing on your home, family, and personal life, and your career, public image, reputation, uh, long-term goals, future, etc., and focusing more on your day-to-day -day life, more on what you want to learn, more on the things that you care about in the world, the things that give you a sense of meaning and purpose in your life, your, your perspectives, your worldviews, your belief systems, your philosophies, your ideals, you know, all of that's going to really come into play over this next 18 months because this is a huge cycle starting on the 17th. And I went in over a lot more detail about this in the 2023 horoscopes for your rising sign uh, here on my channel. So go back and watch that if you haven't seen it already. So then on the 22nd, Venus is going retrograde in the sign of Leo in your seventh house. So more than any other sign Aquarius, if you're an Aquarius rising, this Venus retrograde is going to be so, 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 so much about relationships for you. It is definitely going to be a time where you are reflecting on relationships, where you are, you know, going back in and really reflecting on your values, what you want, what you're attracted to, what you desire in terms of relationships and what feels aligned with you in terms of the significant people and relationships within your life. You could also notice your partner maybe going back and revisiting some things from the past or dealing with some things coming up with this Venus retrograde. So it's gonna bring up a lot of topics of relationships, attraction, relationship dynamics, compromise your values or your partner's values in relationships and uh, love and romance within relationships. So just be pre prepared for that from the 22nd and also into August as well. So then on the 31st, Jupiter and Mars are gonna come into their trine uh, in your eighth house and your fourth house. So this is a really beautiful aspect that's gonna really expand what you want in terms of your finances, investments, wealth, you know, loans, taxes, you know, shared resources and finances and also your family and home life. So this would be a great time if you are, um, you know, maybe maybe not a great time if you're buying a house, but maybe a great time to go back and like redo a house or work on some construction with the house that you've been meaning to do or that you never finished, you know, like reconstructing a house. And the only reason I say it may not be a great time to buy a house is because Venus is retrograding. And even though it's in your seventh house, it does rule your fourth house of home and family, which could also mean that maybe um, you're moving in with a significant other or a significant other is moving in with you uh, or, you know, you're rehabbing a house or you're going back and, you know, reorganizing your house or something along those lines. Or there's just something that 
is really positive that's happening in terms of your home and family and your finances. So anyways, that is what I see for you for the month of July, Aquarius. Let me know down below if this resonates with you or if you could see this resonating with you. Also comment badass down below because you are a badass if you watch this whole thing. Let me know your rising sign as well in that comment so I know what sign you're referring to. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Alrighty, Pisces rising. Welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. So this month, Pisces, is a lot about your health, your wellness, your work, your day-to-day -day routines, and where your heart is. That's really, if I could like sum all of this up for you, this is about your heart. This is about coming home to yourself, coming home to what your heart wants how connected you can be to your heart, how connected you can be to love, to family, to those that you have a strong, deep bond with and having that deep bond within yourself too. And what you're doing on a daily basis, whether in work, whether in health, whether in your routines, to really incorporate those desires, to really incorporate your heart. You know, that's what a lot of this is really about. It's also going to bring up maybe relationships or your romantic life, your love life as well. So that's what we really have happening this month. So we start off July from the 1st to the 9th with Venus joining Mars in the sign of Leo, which is your sixth house sector of work, health, and day-to-day -day routine. So again, you're really starting to feel what you want. You're really starting to feel your desires. You're really starting to feel the fulfillment of your desires and how you can start moving after them, how you can start taking action, creating momentum, going towards what you want. So you're gonna be feeling very inspired, very alive, very passionate, very in love with something that you may be working on or something that you're doing or something that you're passionate about that's coming up that you're kind of you know, working on on a day-to-day -day basis. This is gonna be so, so, so huge for you those first nine days of the month or so. On the third, though, we do have a Capricorn full moon happening in your 11th house of your social life, your social network, groups of people, allies, different people that you connect with. So this is really going to be a time where you're connecting with a lot of different people, or you could be closing chapters in certain social uh, social circles, or you could be kind of realizing or some things could be revealed about some of your your social circles or your goals and aspirations, you know, so some of those topics could really come up for this full moon. So then on the 10th, Mars is going to move into your seventh house of Virgo. So there's going to be a huge focus and a lot of energy going towards your relationships from the 10th until the rest of the month. So you're really going to be feeling a lot of energy, a lot of focus, a lot of action in terms of your relationships. Now, I will say with this is that you may notice some frustration with this transit, especially at first as it opposes Saturn in your first house. So it may feel like your partner or whoever you're with is, you know, being very um, over the top about certain things or just, you know, very, very assertive or very, very determined or very, very fixated on certain things. And maybe you're trying to like pull them in or slow them down or bring them back, you know, in some way. And uh, it could feel a little bit like that. Um, at first, it could also feel like there's a little bit more tension or stress or challenge or frustration within your significant relationships in your life. So watch out for that too. But it's definitely going to be a time where there's a lot of focus coming up around your relationships and the significant people in your life. So just keep an eye out for that. So then on the 17th, we have the nodal shift. Finally, this is one of the biggest transits of 2023. And so the North Node is moving into the sign of Aries and the South Node is moving into the sign of Libra. And these are your second and eighth houses. So this is going to be a lot about finances for you. So for the next 18 months after July 17th, you're going to notice a huge, huge theme surrounding finances, surrounding your priorities, your wealth, your money, your income versus what you share with another person or an institution or what you get from someone else or what you give to someone else financially or resource wise. So where are you compromising too much in terms of your finances, in terms of, you know, trying to keep the balance or the fairness or where are you you know, avoiding conflict in financial situations to keep the peace, but maybe it's still not fair all the way, or maybe you're still compromising a lot or whatever. Like these situations are really going to come to light over the next 18 months. 
from July 17th onward. You may not notice them right away, maybe something that kind of just slowly happens over time, but it is gonna be a really big deal. And it's gonna be more about you focusing on what matters to you, your priorities, your independence in terms of your money and finances and resources. And that's gonna be a really big deal. And if you would like to know more about this transit, go check out my 2023 horoscopes for your rising sign. It's here on my YouTube channel for free. So go check that out if you're interested. So then on the 22nd, Venus is gonna retrograde in the sign of Leo, which is another really big transit of the year. So it's happening in your sixth house of your day-to-day -day routines, your job, your work, your health, you know, the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis to really work on things, to really get things moving, you know? And so this is a time where you can really be reflecting on what you really desire in terms of work, what your heart really wants and desires in terms of your job, in terms of the work you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, different projects that you're working on, in terms of your health, your body, and how you take care of yourself, in terms of your habits, right? And if these things are up to your standards, if these things feel aligned for you, right? So that's gonna be really, really huge from the 22nd until basically the end of August, you know, this is gonna be a really big theme you're gonna notice. So then on the 20, or I'm sorry, then on the 31st, uh, Jupiter and Mars are gonna come into their trine and this is gonna happen in your seventh house and your third house. So towards the end of the month, there's a lot of positive and optimistic energy coming back in in terms of your relationships. It's like whatever you've been working on improving in your relationships or whatever other people in your life have been working on improving is really paying off and you're starting to get more of an optimistic and expansive perspective and mindset on it. And it's also really bringing in a lot of expansion in your day-to-day -day life and your environment in how you're going about things on a day-to-day -day life. Maybe you're being more present, maybe you're enjoying the moment more with the people in your life, things like that towards the end of the month. So if this sounds like it's gonna relate Pisces, let me know down below. Also comment your rising sign down below and comment the word badass down below if you stayed through this whole, whole thing. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Aries, welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So this month is such a big month. And for you, Aries, this is a lot about coming back to your heart, coming back to who you are, coming back to your personal life, your private life, what you love, your inner child, and really beginning to bring that out into the world and really beginning to see things about yourself that maybe you forgot, you know, like what you really love to do, your passions, what really entertains you, just having fun and like, you know, being more playful, you know, like being more playful, feeling more alive, you know, really exploring more of your passions and exploring more of the things that just make you feel lit up, you know, like that is really what a lot of this month is about for you as an Aries rising. So we start off July from the 1st to the 9th with Venus and Mars coming into their conjunction in your fifth house of Leo. Now your fifth house rules a lot of the things I just mentioned, passion, fun, entertainment, you know, what your heart desires. It also rules play, dating, romance, the things that really light you up. And it can also rule children and sexuality at times as well. So you may see a lot of these themes coming up, especially those first nine days of the month where it kind of feels like what you desire, what you want, the things that you love are really coming into alignment with your sense of motivation, your sense of determination, your sense of taking action. It's like you're really taking action on the things that you love. You may be feeling very creative, very bold, and just having a good time, you know, like enjoying life for once. And so that is what this is about. <laughs> and then on the third, we have the full moon happening in the sign of Capricorn. And this is in your 10th house. So this is potentially going to be like a chapter closing in your career or you really getting back to some of the things, some of the lessons that you've learned in terms of your career, your long-term goals, and seeing them in a new light, right? And so that's gonna be happening around the third. So then on the 10th, your ruling planet of Mars is gonna move into the sign of Virgo in your sixth house. So a lot of your focus is gonna start going towards your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. You're gonna start wanting to get really organized here. You're gonna start wanting to like fix things here and solve things here and make things start working again in this area that may have felt neglected for a little bit. It's like, how can I get back to this routine? How can I get back to this structure? How can I fix some of these things and organize this area of life, get more grounded, you know, and the things that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis and my work and my health and the things that really keep me going, like, you know, maintenance, right? So that's gonna be really big from the 10th and for the rest of July with Mars in your sixth house. There's gonna be a lot of energy going towards that area of life. 
So then on the 17th, we have one of the biggest transits of 2023, which is the nodal shift. So the North node is shifting into your sign Aries, which is huge. Okay. So uh, the, this last half of the year is not going to be too much like the first. Um, there may be some similarities, but a lot's going to change after July 17th for you. The North node is moving into your sign. So it's going to amplify your energy. It's going to amplify your sense of identity, amplify your sense of appearance, amplify, you know, you as a person and where you feel you're going in life, where you feel you fit in in the world, what you want to do, your sense of self, you know, self-assurance, feeling a lot more confident in yourself, feeling a lot more bold, stepping into your leadership abilities, you know, stepping into that pioneer that you are and who you really are. You know, the North End is going to be teaching a lot of lessons about who you really are and the you that you really want to step into, you know, the parts of you that you really want to step into. But the South Node is going to be moving into your seventh house of Libra. So you're going to be learning a lot of karmic lessons and how to let go and unravel a lot of old things in terms of career or not, sorry, not career. <laughs> I don't know why I said career, but relationships and other people where you may compromise too much uh, with other people or avoid conflict in some way and how you can get back to your sense of self in your relationships and not get swept away by avoiding conflict or trying to keep the peace or trying to be a people pleaser, etc. So you're going to be learning a lot of lessons here. If you'd like more details on this, make sure to see my 2023 horoscopes for your rising sign here on my YouTube channel for free. <laughs> okay. Um, I went into a lot more detail about this noodle shift. So anyways, on the 22nd, Venus is going to go retrograde, which is another huge transit of the year. She's going to retrograde in Leo, again, your fifth house. And so this is a time where you're going to be really reflecting on your heart's desires, what you really want, you know, your dating life, your sexuality, what you're attracted to, maybe certain things coming up with your children, creative projects, your inner child. You're really going to be going back and slowing down and getting back in touch with these things. And um, yeah, so that's going to be really fun and interesting. And then last but not least at the very end of the month on the 31st mars and virgo is going to trine jupiter and taurus from your sixth to your second house and so whatever you're doing in work towards the very end of the month the last few days of the month especially whatever you're working on improving fixing solving is really going to impact you financially it's going to bring in a lot of success or abundance a lot of positive vibes and expansion in terms of your resources and your finances. And so that's going to be really exciting. So watch out for that at the end of the month. And that is what I'm seeing for you this July, Aries. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening, if you could already see things starting to build towards this direction or towards some of these directions that I named off. Make sure to comment the word badass if you watch this whole horoscope and also comment your rising sign down below so I know what rising sign you are. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Taurus, welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I have been doing this all day. It is getting a little late, so my energy is a little lower. That is why. <laughs> but if you're a Taurus rising, then I'm sure you are good with like this slow vibey kind of energy. So hopefully it is all good. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's get into this. So July for you, Taurus, is a lot about your home, your personal life, your family, really rediscovering the things that make you happy in your personal life, behind closed doors, within your family. It's also a month where you're going to be really exploring more around you, more of your roots, you know, getting really back in touch with familiar things around you, maybe going on a short trip or a short vacation, re like visiting home or visiting a childhood home would be really great right now. It could be a time where you're feeling very nostalgic and there's just a lot of energy for that this month. So let's get into it. So from the first to the ninth, Venus and Mars are coming into their conjunction in your fourth house of your home, family, and private life. So this is definitely a time where you could be making some big changes or coming back into alignment with something in this area of your life. It's like something that you desire or something that you want or a relationship, uh, maybe with a family member or with someone close to you. It's like a lot of like taking a lot of action around these things. And it's gonna be a really great time to start changing up your home or rearranging your home, you know, really getting into like feng shui or something. Maybe you're moving, something like that could really be happening on a month like this. So then on the third, we're gonna have the full moon in the sign of Capricorn, which is your ninth house of higher learning, travels, belief systems. So this could be a time where you are really kind of closing a chapter in this area of your life where you are uh, maybe going again on a trip or where you are, you know, 
being kind of like where there's some things revealed to you from a higher perspective or from a new perspective about your potential, about certain educational pursuits or learning pursuits. So watch out for that on the third. So then on the 10th, we're going to have Mars entering the sign of Virgo, which is your fifth house of love, romance, joy, creativity, passion, children, sexuality. So this could definitely be a time where you are feeling really energized in terms of those topics of your life where you start really working again on like a passion project getting things together getting things organized in terms of your creativity in terms of what you love to do in terms of you know having more fun in your life or doing the simple things that bring you more fun that bring you more joy getting organized so you can have more joy in your life right you may also find that you're really focused on romance love or dating or there's a lot of uh change and energy coming in uh in this area of your life as well so then uh on the 17th we have one of the biggest transits of the year happening which is the nodal shift. Now, this is a huge deal for you, especially Taurus, because the node, the north node has been in your sign and the south node has been in your opposite sign of Scorpio for the last 18 months, since like January, 2022. So you've learned a lot of lessons about yourself, your body, your identity, your appearance, who you are, and uh, getting back to that sense of who you are, that grounded, stable, secure sense within yourself, while also learning a lot of karmic lessons and releasing a lot in terms of your relationships, your significant relationships, and uh, any chaotic or toxic you know, stuff that was still present within your significant relationships or your partnerships. So that is really, really, really uh, the main focus that's been happening for you over the last you know, 18 months. So once the nodes shift, though, the north node's gonna move into Aries, which is your 12th house, and the south node's gonna move into Libra, which is your sixth house. So then the focus is really gonna shift on kind of maybe getting away, going behind the scenes, you know? So this is a month where you're really gonna be focused on your private life, you're really gonna be focused on your personal life, you're really gonna start eventually being focused, especially towards the end of the month and for the rest of this year, on kind of getting away, getting back to you, getting back in touch with the fire inside of you and releasing old subconscious patterns, releasing old subconscious habits, you know, maybe like going on a vacation to a faraway land or moving to a faraway land or discovering a new area, you know, um, you may also find that you want to be more secluded, you know, you want to do things on your own. Um, and then the south node in Libra in your sixth house is going to be about releasing and unraveling a lot of the karmic patterns within your relationships in terms of your work life, your day to day life and your day to day routine. So you could really start seeing how you compromise who you really are, or what you really want in those areas of life with coworkers, you know, your job, health, you know, different your, your day to day routines and how maybe you've been kind of just trying to keep the peace there instead of really going after what you want um, and where certain habits, you know, that you have that you need to address, you need to face, you need to do something about, right? So these are going to be really huge themes that are going to come up for you. Um, it's starting in July and for the rest of the year, for the next 18 months. And if you would like more info on the nodal shift, go see my 2023 predictions video for each rising sign. Um, it's up on my channel if you want to go watch it. And anyways, on the 22nd, Venus, your ruling planet is going retrograde. So this is another really big transit happening this month, one of the biggest of the year. And this is happening in your fourth house, again, of home, family, your personal life, your past, your roots, your foundation. So these are a lot of the themes you're going to see coming up with this Venus retrograde. You're going to be going back and kind of reviewing and revisiting what is aligned with you in terms of your home, your family, your personal life, what you really desire in this area of your life getting back to your roots, getting back to the things that you love that really give your life a sense of foundation and meaning and security, right? And so that's going to be really big for this Venus retrograde for you. So then last but not least on the 31st, the last transit that we have is Mars and Virgo trining Jupiter in your sign Taurus. And so this is going to be really amazing. You're going to be feeling those last few days of the month, maybe really inspired, really expansive, full of just infinite potential and really maybe working on a passion project or something that you love or organizing and doing something that you love putting a lot of energy into something that feels good fun something that you love something that maybe even be like crafty um maybe something to do with children dating or romance it's like and it's just really making you feel expansive and alive and so that is how we end the month so let me know down below taurus if 
this resonated, if you could see these things resonating, what's happening for you, let me know. Also, if you watch this whole thing, comment the word badass down below. Let me know your rising sign as well so I know that it's so I know what rising sign you are. <laughs> and that is all. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Gemini rising, last but not least. Welcome to your July 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. And I just said this in Taurus's horoscope, but these are the last few signs I'm on. I've been doing this all day, so my energy is definitely a little lower now. So if you uh, notice that, then that is why. So I'm just letting you know. But anyways, so for July, Gemini, uh, this month is for you a lot about your money, your finances, your resources, and your priorities, what's near and dear to your heart, but also what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, the places, people, and things that you're connecting with, what you're doing that feels fun, playful, that makes you feel alive, that's giving you a new perception on reality. So that's also a really huge deal this month for you. And then also, there's going to be a lot coming in in terms of a major focus that starts happening towards the middle of the month and for the rest of the month after with Mars moving into uh, your fourth house of home and family. So there's going to be a major focus happening there. So let's get into it. So from the 1st to the 9th, we're going to have Venus and Mars coming into a conjunction in Leo, which is going to be really fun, really bold, really vivacious, just really playful. Um, and so this can be a time where you are really doing a lot of entertaining things like going to events or concerts or shows or um, doing a lot of fun things, a lot of adventures things things that make you feel alive things that light you up maybe hanging out with friends around you or doing different events going on different doing different activities you know in your day-to-day -day life that are that's making you feel like almost like a child again you know and so that's going to be really big for those first nine days it's like you're going to have a lot of desires and passion and you're going to have like the drive the ambition the determination the energy to go after the things that you want around this time so then on the Capricorn full moon, which happens on the third, this is going to be in a spot for you. That is your eighth house. So this is about your money, your resources, building wealth, investments, debt, taxes, uh, shared resources and finances. So this could be a chapter closing. It looks like a really beneficial one though, because it's going to be in a trine with Jupiter in your 12th house. So um, you're going to be, you know, really kind of like letting some things go for the better potentially or making, you know, going through some endings financially for the better so you can expand and grow and maybe heal or maybe move out of certain patterns or cycles. So then on the 10th, we're going to have Mars entering your fourth house of Virgo, like I mentioned. And so this is where you're going to have a lot of energy, a lot of determination, a lot of motivation going on, especially in terms of your home and family. This would be a great time to organize your house. This would be a great time to get really crafty uh, with your home or to redecorate or build a house or whatever. Maybe not I don't know, maybe not build a house because Venus is going to go retrograde at the end of this month. So I don't know how I feel about that. But this is a great time to really kind of just get into the roots of your home life and do whatever work and put in whatever energy needs to be put in there. But this could also bring up some confrontation or frustration or some tension within your home life as well or with family members. So do just be on the lookout for that. So then on the 17th, we are going to have the one of the biggest transits of the year happening, which is the nodes are moving into Aries and Libra and out of Taurus and Scorpio, where they've been since like the end of January 2023. So they've been in your 12th and 5th house. So you've had to learn a lot of lessons about kind of getting away, going within, finding that peace behind the scenes, finding that harmony, that comfort, that security, that abundance, that fulfillment behind the scenes and letting go of like old toxic, like chaotic, shady, uh, uh, ways of like going about your work life or your health life or your routines, you know, um, just maybe dealing with a chaotic work environment or a toxic work environment. And, you know, you've really had the urge to just really get away from that and focus on simplicity and not so much chaos and, um, you know, maybe get away yourself or remove yourself from situations. And so, but now, um, on the 17th, the North node is going to enter Aries and the South node is going to enter Libra, which is going to be a way lighter, way more fun time for you, where you're going to be feeling a lot more social this second half of the year. You're really going to be um, connecting with different people, focusing on your network, first focusing on your, uh, uh, your ambitions, your aspirations, you know, and the different people that connect with you in that way, like that you relate to, right? 
And then the south node is going to move into Libra. So you're also going to have a lot coming up in terms of your passions, your um, creativity, the things that you love to do, dating, romance, etc. And you're going to be learning some karmic lessons there and kind of releasing what's no longer aligned in terms of that, where you may try to compromise in that area or with romantic partners or dating or children, or where you may, um, you know, keep your own sense of passions and you know, your own sense of what you enjoy to yourself instead of putting yourself out there like the leader that you can be. And so that is what a lot of this may be about for you as a Gemini rising. So then on the 22nd, Venus is going to go retrograde, which is the other really big thing happening this month. Um, Venus will retrograde in the sign of Leo, which again is your third house. So this is going to be a time where you're really going to be reflecting and revisiting and, you know, kind of looking back on a lot of your creative ideas, your creative pursuits the environments that you surround yourself in, the people, places, and things you surround yourself with, and what's really aligned with you and what isn't, like what desires you really have, what you really want to do in your day-to-day -day life, and, and how you can be more in alignment with that. And so that is really what this Venus retrograde is going to be about for you. Uh, you may also go back and revisit certain environments or certain places um, around this time from the 22nd into August as well. And last but not least, on the 31st, Jupiter and Mars are going to come into their trine from your 12th to your fourth house. So this could definitely be a time where a lot of the improvements and work that you're doing in your home, family, and personal life are really starting to make you feel like, you know what, like I'm ready to just let go. I'm ready to just relax or, you know, I'm ready to go on vacation. Um, you know, again, you may be feeling like this sense of wanting to expand by kind of getting away you know, by kind of being more secluded or by kind of focusing on the things that bring you pleasure and joy in your life. And so, uh, yeah, but you could be noticing some success uh, from some of that. It could feel like, you know, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're creating like a little garden that feels like a little, you know, getaway or something like that would be really beneficial with this transit. But like, yeah, the end of the month, really positive energy coming in. So, so that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini, for the month of July. Let me know down below if this related. Also comment the word badass if you made it this far. And also let me know what your rising sign is so I know what rising sign you are. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. That is the end of this video and I will see you guys in the next one.